Let's talk about buoyancy and drag in fluids. First of all, what do we mean by a fluid? I think that's really important. I don't just mean liquids. Of course, it can be a liquid, water, something like that, but it's also air. So for example, uh, different types of gases. Those can also be considered fluids. It's important to consider. Now let's talk about buoyancy. Buoyancy is the ability for something to float. So the question is, like, how do things actually float? So this is uh, what we're going to call, um, what we're going to learn about is Archimedes principle here. So this principle says that the upwards buoyancy force, okay, so the force going upwards on an object, the buoyancy force is going to be this force uh, going up when it's in water, for example, or some kind of fluid, whether it's completely or partially submerged in a fluid, it's equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. What do I mean by that? It's actually really cool. This is basically what explains how it is that a giant, ridiculous ship can actually float in the water. It's not because it's lighter. It's crazy heavy. So floating is not about being light. It's about displacement. So what does that mean? That means that uh, I have actually a glass of water here, for example, and I'm going to attempt to like watch. I'm going to put my hand in it. Watch carefully the level of water. As I put my hand in the water, you're going to notice the water level go up. That's because I'm displacing. Do you notice I'm displacing water right now? Well, if I displaced enough water to where it equaled the force of gravity you know, on the object, on my hand, for example, then it would float. It would be buoyant. So, for example, if we look at this diagram right here, what this is is, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of rudimentary looking, but it's really deep, actually. I think this is a really good explanation for it. What it is, is imagine if you had the same amount of material, like the same volume. So this, uh, this material, either it's all, you know, squished in a ball, for example, let's say it's a metal ball. And if you do that, you put it in water, glug, 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 it sinks. Now, why is that? You might think, oh, it's because it's too heavy. No, it's because it doesn't have enough surface area, so it doesn't displace enough water to equal its weight. However, if you took that same metal and you formed it into this kind of hull shape like this right here, it's still the same exact amount of material. It's just formed differently. Turns out that will be able to push water away. And just like Newton's laws, if you push water away, water also pushes you then up. Therefore, you can float in some situations. So that's the key idea behind buoyancy. It's all about this upwards buoyancy force. It's all related to the displacement of the fluid. This is one of my favorite jokes. You can tell the gender of any ant by throwing it in water. If it sinks, girl ant. If it floats, boy ant. <laughs> Okay, we have an equation for this, and it's in your data booklet, which is good. And it goes like this. It's F, that's the force, and B for buoyancy. So that's kind of nice. And it goes rho times V times G. So first of all, let's write this down right here. And remember, good news, this is in your data booklet. So what do all the letters mean? Well, FB is the buoyancy force. That should be okay. Rho is how we write the density of fluid. We love Greek symbols in physics. So this is uh, rho here, density of fluid. And density is in kilograms per meter cubed. So it's like a, it's a mass over volume. I just want to make a nicer three here. And then uh, the volume of fluid displaced, that'll be capital V, and that'll be measured in meters cubed, because that's the volume. And of course, G is the acceleration into gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. There we go. So if something's passing through a fluid, there's also going to be some kind of drag force. Just like, you know, you're going through the air, there's a force going the opposite way. Well, if you're going through the water, there's going to be a drag force too. Water or air, remember, can both be fluids. So what we call the Stokes Law, and it's a viscous drag force. So Stokes Law says this, that an object, so for example, if we have a sphere and it's passing through a fluid, either water, air, whatever, it's going to experience a drag force that's opposite to the motion. In other words, if it's falling uh, downwards, for example, uh, then maybe I draw this, you know, force going downwards like FG. There's going to be a upwards force, maybe smaller than FG, but it'll be some kind of drag force here. So FD for drag. So this equation goes like this, and it's in your data book that we're just good. FD equals 6 times pi times eta times r times v. This is your new data booklet. So again, you don't have to memorize this, which is, I think, really good. So what does everything mean? Uh, FD is your drag force. That's your force you know, that's going in the opposite direction of the motion. R is just the radius of the sphere, so that's nice. V is the speed of the sphere, so in meters per second. And this 
weird symbol here. It's a Greek symbol, eta. It looks like a weird curly N. That's the viscosity of the fluid. That's something new. That's measured in Pascal seconds. It has to do with pressure and time. So let's talk a little bit more about viscosity because that's what this, this whole term is. Viscosity is actually this this eta here. So if you have a large value, for example, large uh, viscosity, well, the viscosity is all about resisting flow. I could see uh, an exam question asking you something like that, okay? So viscosity, what is it? It's a resistance to flow. So if you have a high uh, viscosity value, it's actually you resist the flow well. So something that's really thick that, you know, doesn't flow very fast. So something like maple syrup, because I'm Canadian, uh, or engine oil, whatever. A uh, small, of course, uh, viscosity, if something flows easy, like water or whatever. Now, when we're dealing with especially, uh, not actually so much Stokes law with drag, but actually with the buoyancy force, if ever we need to know the volume of a sphere, uh, remember, it's actually in your data booklet, which is nice, you can look it up, but just remember that the volume of a sphere, now that's not this V here, that's a different V than this one here. So this one here is actually capital V, uh, maybe I'll say V sphere, for example. The volume of a sphere is going to be just four thirds pi r cubed. So that's an important thing in case you need it, especially when we're talking about a volume of, you know, something that's being displaced. If it's a sphere, then that volume of fluid displaced is going to be related to the volume of a sphere. Okay. So let's consider then what happens when you have a particle that's being dropped in a fluid. So some kind of particle, some sphere, you know, moving downwards. I have this right here because it really reminds me of this terminal velociraptor. Because actually, uh, this force of air, this drag force, is related to what we've just been learning about, you know, for Stokes Law, for example. So this drag force you know, has to do with, you know, air resistance. If there wasn't any air, there wouldn't be any drag force. And of course, uh, at some point, you know, you move faster and faster, that the drag force is related to your speed and your surface area. It turns out at some point, the drag force is going to be equal to the downwards force. It doesn't mean you stop. It just means you have a terminal velocity. You won't be accelerating uh, any faster. You're going to be just at a constant speed. All right, so let's look at this one right here. So just to remind you then, what are the different forces that are going to act on this thing right here? Well, this is going to be the force of gravity. Uh, and that's going to be mg, and that's going to be going downwards. So maybe I'll draw that. So I'll draw this one here, saying fg. Okay. Well, it's also going to experience this buoyancy force. Remember, we learned about that one. So it's going to be rho times v times g. So that means the density times the volume of this sphere times uh, g, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So that might be some upwards force. So fb. Buoyancy is upwards. In this case here, then the drag force, remember that's going to be 6 pi uh, eta times r times v. Uh, whoops, that didn't look like a v. There you go, like that. And this here is going to be um, going upwards as well. So it's going to be upwards, upwards, in this case, downwards. That's if this sphere is going down. So it's going to be also this upwards force. That's going to be, you know, f d drag. So in this case right here, there'll be you know two forces up, one down, and we'll have to see, hey, is it accelerating? Is it at constant speed? Because if it's at constant speed, of course, then the down equals the sum total of the up. So maybe I should write that down at the drag force right here, this one right here, it opposes the motion. So that means that if it was going, if the sphere was actually going up, then the drag force would be down. If the sphere is going down, then the drag force is going up. So it acts like a friction force.